Hello. I just noticed something quite interesting. Maurice Nicole, his books were all published after 1949 when Gurdjieff died. In other words, Gurdjieff did not see all these psychological commentaries. They were published after Gurdjieff died. And so Gurdjieff hasn't authorised them as being part of the work. It's quite interesting because Maurice Nicole was a student of Uspensky. And he did spend a year working under Gurdjieff in the institute, in the priory, but then just went home and studied with Ospensky again. So he was there for a year and then just got on a boat home to England. Gurdjieff didn't have anything else for him. Quite strange, really. I'm going to say a few things about Nicole based on a passage and I could have really chosen any passage because they all seem to me to be quite similar. He begins like this. It was said recently that one should not do anything negatively. In this age it might be said that in the world people tend as a whole to do things negatively. But you see, it's mechanicalness that is the problem. Mechanicalness and negativity are two different things. If we look at the sky, sometimes there's thunder and rain and dark clouds. But it's not mechanical, it's simply part of the weather. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's rainy. For a man, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. There's no problem with that. As long as it's real. Now he says that sometimes people do things negatively. But what does that mean negatively? It doesn't even describe an emotion. Negatively according to who? For instance, um, if you were working in a factory and you smile all the time, I'm sure that would piss off the owner. They tend to be very strict in factories. So negative according to who? Negative does not describe a particular emotion. Do you see? It's quite ridiculous. He basically means things that upset society. Then he says, we spend a great deal of our time in being negative and doing things negatively without noticing it. Who is this we spend a great deal of time? Why do you say we? Are you not I? And if you are not I, Mr. Nicole, Mr. Nicole, if you are not I, then what authority do you have to teach? He says, we spend a great deal of our time in being negative and doing things negatively without noticing it. If you are, for instance, um, someone who's prone to sadness, you're not actually being sad. That's the strange thing. If you're somebody who is pr prone to being angry, you're not actually being angry. Because anger is simply a particular energetic transformation. It's a particular kind of event. And all events are nourishing. But if you are acting habitually, it means it's not being processed. Often people who are habitually sad have a difficulty really entering inside the feeling. They are held on the surface. They are held. Often they are held because they are two contradictory feelings. For instance, you can be sad and numb at the same time. At the same time, two. 
and these prevent them from being digested. They prevent them being processed. That often happens, for instance, if you're with a parent and they say one thing, but you feel emotionally from your parent something different. They may say yes with their mouth, but their body says no. And the child receives two instincts, two instructions from the parent. One is to go and one is to stop. And this creates confusion inside the child. And that is crystallized as two simultaneous contradictory emotions. And that creates a holding pattern because the instruction inside is saying yes and no at the same time and it's blocked. So when Nicole talks about being negative, he does not actually have any real emotional understanding. He doesn't describe any particular emotion, nor does he, does he have any real experience with working with emotions. He's really just extending the idea from society that you shouldn't be negative because it gets everybody down or something. It's not good enough and it's not going to work. And I tell you, my friend, whoever's listening to this, that unless you have the right answers, unless you know what is what, you will fail. Because the only thing that's going to work is the truth is real knowledge. See, later on he says this, and this is very typical of Nicole. He says, here is an example of a letter. I have noticed that temptation can be met if it is recognized as temptation. I was about to fall into a well-known slough of despond. These are all Christian words, slough of despond, temptation. He tends to veer off quoting little parts of the Bible. And then he talks about the work being a great thing, that we have to adhere to this ancient work. Now this is all just um, grandstanding. He does it every few paragraphs in order to impress but that does not mean he has accurate knowledge. A little further down he says this, self-remembering increases the force of consciousness. The act of self-remembering as for example, remembering distinctly one's plan, one's aim in the midst of some difficult situation actually creates new energy. This is wrong. Nicole is wrong here. He's wrong to say this and he's wrong to teach it. Self-remembering is remembering of the self, meaning of your identity. It is not the remembrance of your plan, your aim, or anything else. It is not about creating new energy. It is not about increasing the force of consciousness, whatever the fuck that means. He probably means the force of my will. In other words, he wants to push through like all ordinary people. He wants to find a way to push through, like to have a cup of coffee and get going. Yeah? That has got nothing to do with consciousness. He uses the word force. That is a, a clear indicator that he is trying to push through with will, just like an ordinary person. And all his use of these words, you see he's using these words self-remembering, consciousness and those quotes about the Bible but he does not understand their meaning. He, he is simply wrong. What I have said is accurate and the more you read of it, if you understand, you will see it everywhere. He's not self-realized, he doesn't really understand the meaning of these terms. And he should not teach, really. And you can see that um, you can write six volumes and you can follow Nicole for 60 years and you're just barking up the wrong tree. 
That is the nature of this earth world, I'm afraid. That is why Gurdjieff talks about the terror of the situation. What else do you think it means? That is why Jesus died on a cross. That is the, you see, people will say, oh, the work is so difficult because it takes such a long time. No, it doesn't take a long time. They miss the mark. They do not understand what is happening. They can follow Nicole. I, I've heard many fourth way teachers talk, say that they've been reading those psychological commentaries for 30 or 40 years. What are you reading? He is wrong. He's saying things that are completely in misunderstanding. You have to stop. Only what is real, what is true, is going to save you. If, for instance, self-remembering, it means remembering of the self. Hence the word self-remembering. It doesn't mean remembering your agenda for the day. It doesn't mean aim remembering. It doesn't mean will remembering. It means self remembering. What does self mean? Self means identity. Either your personal identity or the identity of the divinity, which is like an external identity. There is something interesting about people's preference for summer. They love it because it's easy, because the sun is close to us and it's bright. I suppose that really means that God's light is close to us. And so there is a, there is a good reason to prefer summer. It means that God's light is close to us and we prefer that. But in terms of the cycles of this plane, there is no difference between summer or winter or the emotions of summer and the emotions of winter. Elation and anger both have functions at this level. All are equivalent because they make the cycle of the plane function. In other words, if you want to get a harvest out of this plane, you have to perform all the duties of spring, summer, autumn and winter. Only then do you get a harvest. And so all emotions are equivalent. They are simply digestion of a different phase of life. But like I have said, the problem with emotions is not that they are negative, but that they are frozen or stuck, and that they are not really experienced. Just another confusion that wastes people's lives. And I tell you, it's very easy to waste your entire life and spend 80 years reading books that mean nothing. And Gurdjieff described why that has happened. It is a misuse of the mind, of our intelligence, of our faculties, by the entire society, based upon certain things that happened in the past, in Babylon, the ancient Greek fishermen, and so on. And so people become a mill for nonsense, and they, they produce beautifully published books with very wonderful graphic design on the front, and they appeal to authority. Where does the psychological teaching come from, and why has it misled the Gurdjieff teaching? Well, Maurice Nicole has a big part to play there. Nevertheless, the truth is, is that if you're an ordinary person and you read such books, I'm sure they stimulate something in you. But um, the reality is that there are much better psychological understandings today, especially coming out of America. Um, on the fringes, there are a whole series of them.